Oh, hey, what's up, guys? It's Jared here with Stanta Auto Reviews. Today we have a 2012 McLaren MP412C, and I'm about to show you how this thing is a ultimate sports car bargain. Let's go. So showing off this spectacular car. Um, as you can see, this red color really sparkles. And when we get in the light, we'll show it off some more. Starting off with the front though, headlights look really good. It's a sleek design that fits the car. You do have the McLaren logo that lights up in like an LED strip along with your normal headlights right there. We do have the McLaren logo in the middle, which looks really nice, especially with that red color. And then coming down, just showing off the whole front end, we have functional ventilation over here. We do have a sensor right there. And then along with that, we do have our massive windshield, which does have one wiper blade, which is pretty neat. Um, not too many cars do one wiper blade. And just showing off a comparison of how low this car is compared to me real quick. My knee is above the front end. So this thing sits four inches off the ground. So it's a very, very low car. It is on lowering springs. That's why. Coming over to the side, we do have a reflector. Going over to these rims right here, we're running 245, 30ZR20s. So these are aftermarket rims, but they're three piece, look very nice. They look like something out of GTA 5. If you play GTA 5, you already know what I'm talking about. Very good look for the car. Really quick, showing off this side mirror. It is carbon fiber with a turn signal. Looks very good, and you'll see there's a bunch of carbon fiber in this vehicle. And then just getting a whole view of the middle, it's a body line that slopes out on the top and the bottom and goes into the intake on the side. Very good look. Um, obviously you need all the functional ventilation you can get for this vehicle. And you can see that paint sparkle real quick. We do have another inlet right there for cooling for the engine. Back rims, a bit wider, but they do look very good. And then going over to the side, just showing straight down there real quick, kind of what I'm talking about, the aerodynamic look of this vehicle. We do have our little tail lights, which are integrated within the lines back here. We do have our exhaust outlets, McLaren logo, our aerodynamic spoiler that does change depending on what you're doing and driving. You do have a brake strip right there. And then your engine sits back here. We'll show more of that soon, along with a bunch of carbon fiber. And then over on this side, this is where you'll put your gas in. Uh, you'll need a good bit of it, especially if you're flooring it nonstop. And real quick, I'll show you how to open this door. So here's the key. It is a carbon fiber key. You do have lock, unlock, and the front. Um, you could press unlock to open the door, but I'm gonna show you the secret trick. So you put your hand flat up under it and you just rub it. And that is how you get in. That's actually the first time I've ever done it first try. So you guys got a first look. Let's go check it out. Okay, so it's not just tall people like me, anybody in general. You wonder how the heck do you get inside one of these things? Well, I'm 6'6", six, six, and I'm about to show you. So what you do, you have your door right here. You kind of just slide in like this and you swing your legs in and voila, you're inside. Um, headroom is in the 37 inch range, legroom's in the 42, 43 inch range. I'll put it down below. But if you're looking for this as a tall person, you can make it work. It's just not the most practical vehicle. Let me show you why. All right, everyone. So getting started with the interior portion. As a tall person, it is kind of difficult in the legroom space, especially when you put your leg out. I'll show you why in just a moment. Going over here to the doors, they do use very nice materials on these doors. Down here, it's not very padded, but it's okay. Carbon fiber with your window controls. This is how you open the door. You just pull it up and it opens. You do have a grip handle. There's no storage, so it's just a little pocket right there. Your AC controls are on each side of the doors, so each door gets their own. That is very cool and unique. I haven't seen it on any other car, and I do think it's something they should bring back, but hey, that's up to them. You do have your Meridian speaker system. I believe it's a four speaker system in this vehicle. We have three air vents, one, two, and three over there. And then right here, we do have our light controls, which I'm trying to get over there to get it. Turn signal, and look how they use the turn signal and the lights. 
pretty cool little dials that they use. Going back, very nice steering wheel. There's no grips up here, which I found interesting, uh, but it is a nice material along with carbon fiber, flat bottom, more carbon fiber, and then you have some perforated stitching, or not stitching, but just perforation here and here, which looks great. All right, and getting this thing started because I want to show you the rest up here and I need to move the wheel. Just put your foot on the brake, make sure the key's in the car, and you just press the start button here and it comes to life. And as you can see, it took me two tries. You have to give it a bit of a hold rather than just a push. Let me go and get this out of the way real quick. All right, cool. So now showing this off, this is your display. You do have your speedometer down there. Tachometer goes all the way around. You do have your little section over here, which shows off a bunch of different stuff. You use the little controller down here to do that. As you can see, plenty of things you can choose from. It's pretty neat how much stuff there is in here. And then you do have your drive mode right here, which I will show more of that in a second, along with your gear and then your fuel, all that good stuff. Going over to this side over here, and I'm trying to get down so you can see it. You do have another little option for your mirror controls. It is kind of a strange spot, but it is over here. Coming to the center stack, speaker up here, more carbon fiber, vent right in the front. You do have your display, which is not the biggest display in the world, but it does get the job done. And you have navigation, media, phone. You can connect internet to this and go on web browsers like YouTube and stuff. It's pretty cool. Down here, more radio controls like volume, back, Bluetooth, all that. Down here is where you get to your drive modes. And so this is where you start it. And then you have your mode for powertrain. And you have your mode for handling. To start this up, you just hit the active button. They glow orange and you'll know it's ready. This is arrow for the spoiler. That's for manual mode. And you have normal, you have sport, and you have track. And you can do it for both. And it completely changes the car. And one thing I will say is whenever you do that, you can feel the car stiffening up on handling, which is pretty cool. Down here, launch control. You have your winter mode. Park brake electronic. Hazards are down here along with all your drive modes. There is no park brake. It's just neutral and e-brake, kind of like a manual. You do have your lock and your front button. You do have a little storage console right here. All right, to open that middle storage console, it took me a second. You literally just pull it, and this is all the storage space you really get. Actually, I did lie. So you do have this, and then down up here, you actually do have some cup holders in a little cubby. So it is a little bit of room. It's generous, they give you cup holders. Now showing off what I was talking about earlier, I wear a size 13 shoe, and as you can see, I literally could not put both of my feet down there without getting in the way so you do kind of have to leave one back and then go between the two that is something worth noting and then i'm going to go ahead and show you these seats real quick all right so showing off these seats i actually got out because one it's hot and two it's better just to get out for this so very nice looking seats as you can see they're bucket seats they fit you in nice leather used right here we go in and it flows all the way down your seat controls are right there back here you do have a lot of space to put some stuff if you have to your engines back there you do have the suede headliner real quick you do have the lights up there you just tap turns them on these do fold uh, this way and then going over here back out there's two more things i want to show one this is how you release the door in case the sensors mess up and two this is how you release the engine compartment and then this is a little button which i will look up what that is and let you know Let's go ahead and show off the front. All right, so showing off the front, we're gonna use the key. So you just press open and then it's a latch up here, kind of like any other car with an engine up front. You do have a deep pocket of space down here along with little neck compartments. You do have your washer fluid, brake fluid, and power steering fluid up here. And then also one more thing I wanted to show, you are supposed to charge the battery while the car is off. So they do give you this and the charge compartment is down here. and that's just what McLaren wants you to do. So I figured that was a fun feature to show since I don't know how many people may or may not know that. Let's go ahead, show off the engine. All right, let's go ahead and talk about why this McLaren is such a fun car to drive. With the power plant, you have a 3.8 liter V8 engine making 592 horsepower at 7,000 RPMs, 443 pound-feet of torque at 3,000 RPMs, and that horsepower number was later bumped up by McLaren as a free upgrade to 616 horsepower. This is a dual overhead cam engine with variable valve timing. 
seven speed automated manual transmission. It is rear wheel drive. Premium fuel is what you need to put in this McLaren. You get 15 MPGs in the city, 22 in the highway, 18 combined. Your curb weight is 3,161 pounds or 1,434 kilograms. And this specific one in this video has been upgraded with a stage two ECU tune and upgraded downpipes to bring it to 725 horsepower. And as you're about to see, sounds amazing, drives amazing. Let's go ahead and take a look. So getting started, I have put everything in sport mode and I do have arrow on. We are going to go automatic on this. So we're going to go ahead, turn the park brake off, put it in drive, and here we go. So we're just leaving a parking lot right now, nothing crazy, but I am going to show you how this thing moves. <laughs> and you can hear those turbos spooling right behind us. I mean, this thing is just ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous, and it, it just it keeps wanting to go. So let me go ahead and get over this right here and then I'll show you one more time. <laughs> and we're only getting up to 30. Um, we're in a parking lot so I'm not gonna go super fast, but we're gonna hit the main road and let you know how quick it goes. So here we go. All right, everyone, so going on to a road, we're gonna take a right, straight it out, and let's go. Wow, this thing's got power. So like I mentioned, it does have a tune on it, so it's pushing in the 700 horsepower range. And my goodness, you can feel it, you can hear it. This thing is exhilarating. I mean, wow. You know, I drove the GTR a while back and that thing was crazy, but the difference is this is rear wheel drive, that was all wheel drive. So they're two completely different beasts. And the engine placement was also much different. So you can feel the weight difference lower to the ground you can feel everything in this car compared to that and as you can see I mean bumps on this thing you can hear every little bump all right so we're taking it on a new road I'm hoping this one's not as bumpy but going uphill I mean you got plenty of power to get up it's no issue at all and honestly I mean for this thing to be lowered it does drive pretty smooth I'm kind of shocked um, I kind of expect it to be rough like the GTR, but even the transmission is way smoother on this than the GTR ever was. I find that to be pretty cool. And that's another thing I will say you need to get used to if you haven't driven a car like this, is being super low and having terrible visibility. <laughs> the wing right now is just right up in the rear view of the center rear view. Can't see anything back there. Uh, you do have your side mirrors, but they're kind of small. So you do have to get used to that. But I mean, this thing will cruise when you're not pushing it, which like I said before, the GTR really didn't do. It kept pushing and jerking around, so it is really nice. And I mean, this thing does make noise. I mean, you drive by people, they're looking at you like, what the heck is this man doing? I'm driving a McLaren, that's all I'm doing. So, we're gonna take it on this little windy road right here and test our handling. So we'll be back in just a moment. Okay, so testing the handling of this thing. You literally feel like you're going nowhere. I mean, especially if you're not pushing the gas hard, you feel like you're going nowhere. You're just locked in on the road. Downforce is crazy. Like I said, this thing is lowered, so you have even more force to the ground than most cars would. Oh yeah, that feels great. And okay, we're going downhill too, so we're fighting that battle, and this thing just takes it like a champ. I barely feel like I'm trying. It's almost like a, it's like a video game, except you can actually feel the car. And you can hear it downshifting right there for me. Holding down the third gear. And this thing just wants to jump in sport mode. I mean, I think it's mad at me for not going. So we'll get around here and give it a little... Oh yeah. This thing, it's, it's a monster. It's a monster. All right, so we're gonna test a straight line hit. So here we go. right up to 60 and my goodness you can start to feel that thing pull that's the first time I've actually had it pulling like that 
don't mind this right here. It's just making a little beeping noise. No big deal. It's going to go away. But wow. Um, so what, what do I think? What do I think? Final thoughts. If you're looking to get one of these and you can find it for a good bargain, which there are good bargains on these, I would say go for it. Um, I mean, it's a heck of a sports car. It's got plenty of power, plenty of tunability. And there's not really much out there like it. I mean, anyone can go buy a GTR, right? But it's just not the same as this, right? And honestly, personal opinion, I would get a GTR just because I'm taller. But if you're looking for overall enthusiast feel, I feel like this is the way to go right here. I mean, that V8 is just... It's talking for me. All right, one last pool of engine noise. Yep, still great. Still great. Thank you all so much for watching this video. It truly means a lot that you checked it out today. This car was an absolute blast. Um, probably one of the most crazy cars I've ever driven. And I've driven a couple of cars on this channel. And I'm just truly grateful that we were able to get one of these on the channel. If you do own one of these or you know much about them, comment down below. Let me know what you think. And until the next video, I'll see you guys. Peace out.